السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما عن بعد إن شاء الله تودي will be our second session and uh, from this session onwards we will begin the summarized biography of the first rightly guided khalif the first from the khulafa rashidin abu bakr as siddiq radiyallahu anhu so in the first section we will go through some aspects of his life in makka his life in makka before the prophet of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam before the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was granted prophethood the seerah of uh, the life of abu bakr siddiq can be divided into the following stages number 1 his life in makka before the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was granted prophethood number 2 his life in makkah after the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was granted prophethood then his life in medina till the death of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then his life as the khalifa of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so today we will begin with some of the important things some of the some of the important facts with regard to his life in makkah before the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was granted prophethood first of all abu bakr as-siddiq radiyallahu anhu actual name was not abu bakr abu bakr was his kunniya his real name was abdullah his real name was abdullah and it was said that his name in the jahiliya was abdu kaaba but later on it was changed to abdullah abu bakr is his kunniya abu bakr is his kunniya abu bakr is his kunniya and abu bakr means father of a young camel Bakr also means a very large Arab tribe. Probably he got the name Bakr Abu Bakr because he had many camels and perhaps he had many young camels. Perhaps that is the reason he got the name Abu Bakr. And that was his title. His father's name was Uthman. His father's name was Uthman. and his father's kunniya was abu quhafa and abu quhafa uthman he accepted islam when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam conquered makka in the year of the conquest of the of makka the lineage of abu bakr as-siddiq radiyallahu anhu is from one of the best lineages of the quraysh it is from one of the best lineages of the quraysh His lineage is Abu Bakr Abdullah, Abu Bakr Abdullah bin Uthman bin Amir bin Amr bin Kaab bin Saad bin Taym bin Murra bin Kaab bin Lu'ay bin Ghalib bin Fihr. Okay. So Fihr is the one who is called the Quraysh. That's to Fihr is the one who is called, also called Quraysh and um, the tribe of the quraysh are called that name after fihr's uh, alternative name that is the quraysh the lineage of abu bakr siddiq radiyallahu anhu meets that of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam at this grandfather murra bin kaab murra bin kaab there the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and abu bakr's lineage meets so it is uh, it is necessary that all of you memorize the lineage of abu bakr at least till ghalib bin fihr okay so that will help you and assist you in knowing the relationship between the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and abu bakr as-siddiq radiyallahu anhu 
Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu, he had many titles. One of his titles was Al Atiq. Al Atiq. Uh, the most authentic reason why he had the title Al Atiq means Al Atiq Al Atiq was that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told Abu Bakr and uh, is there in the, in the Hadith in Tirmizi three six seven nine and Sheikh Al Albani rahimahullah said that it is Sahih that uh, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to Abu Bakr rejoice for you are the Atiq of Allah from the hellfire. Okay, Atiq here means someone who has been freed. That is, uh, someone who has been freed from slavery or some other thing that is unpleasant, which is not good. So, when the Prophet ﷺ said him that you are the Atiq of Allah from the hellfire, it means that you are the one whom Allah freed from the hellfire. You are the one whom Allah um, has freed from going into the hellfire. This is one reason that he was called Atiq. Atiq can also mean someone who is noble. Atiq can also mean someone who is old or ancient. Fine. In this context, it may mean that Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu is someone very honorable. Okay. And likewise. Another reason that it is said that he was uh, named Atiq is because his uh, mother said that Abu Bakr was Atiq from death. That is Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu, his mother. She had many children but all of them died at a young age. So when he was saved, she said that he was Atiq. He was freed from death. And Allah knows the best. Another title of his, and this must be the most famous title. Okay. And this is the most famous title is he is being called a Siddiq. He is being called a Siddiq. A Siddiq means a person who is truthful or a person who continuously believes in the truthfulness of, some, of something. That is, Siddiq is someone who is truthful or someone who believes in the truth. And there are many places in the Sunnah where we see how Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu got the title as Siddiq. The most famous narration, it's an authentic narration. And we uh, know that when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to Al-Isra al-Miraj and came, and the Mushrikeen went and asked oh, Abu, Abu Bakr, do you believe that someone can uh, go to Jerusalem, that is in Palestine, and come back in one night? And when Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, he agreed to that, that yes, it, it can happen. Fine. At that instance, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam gave him the name, the title as Siddiq. That is the one who, the one who testifies to the truth. It's a long story. I made it short because inshallah, if uh, Allah guides us, we will cover this uh, in the seerah of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu in the later episodes. Epi- later episodes later videos inshallah another name of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was as sahib as sahib means the companion Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran chapter 9 verse number 40 okay he refers to him as as sahib and the scholars are unanimous that this refers to Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Okay, chapter 9, verse number 40. Preferably, all of you have to go and read the verse and the translation of this verse. This was refers to the uh, context in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Bakr were in the cave, and Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu was afraid that the mushrikeen would come and arrest them or catch them inside the cave. So as sahib in that verse refers to Abu Bakr Siddiq because he was the sahib al ghar the companion of the cave. Another name of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu is Al-Atqa. Sir Al-Atqa that means 
Alatka means pious and righteous people. And especially in the Quran, chapter number 92, verse number 17, the word Alatka refers to Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu according to many scholars. And another name was Al-Awwah. Al-Awwah may mean someone who does a lot of dua to Allah and it also means someone who is merciful and soft-hearted. And Abu Bakr was named Al-Awwah because he was very merciful and he had a lot of compassion towards other people. With regards to his birth, he was born after the year of the elephant, Amul Fil. The Prophet ﷺ was born in Amul Fil. And he was either born two to three years after the Amul Fil, or like some of the scholars of history mention, he was born two and a half years after the Amul Fil. So he was around two and a half years or two years and some months younger than the Prophet ﷺ. With regards to his physical description, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu who was very fair, slightly yellow. He had a light beard and his beard was longer at his, uh, you know, at his chin. And on the sides, on the cheeks, it was short. Okay. He was very lean. So much so that the hadith say that he could not tie his lower garment tightly. It would always come onto his, uh, it would always come onto his waist the lowest most part because he was very slim and uh, when his hair had whitened when he became old he would apply al katam that is uh, it's uh, something it is a coloring substance used like the henna okay and uh, with regards to his life in jahiliya before uh, the nabuwa of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam abu bakr siddiq radiyallahu anhu was well respected among the quraysh he was responsible for the debts and blood money. So if anyone had to repay debts, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu would be the mediator. And if there was there were issues, blood money. What is blood money? If a person murders another person, okay, the victim's family, they can either ask uh, the court to punish the murderer, okay, or they can forgive him, or they can ask a, ask a blood money from him. So the blood money in the times of the Quraysh was 100 camels per person. So if there was an issue like this, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu would be the mediator with regards to the blood money. Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, he mastered the knowledge of genealogy. He had the knowledge of the lineages, lineages of the various Arab tribes. He was a businessman and he was quite a successful businessman. Even before the prophethood of the Prophet Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu was a rich and wealthy businessman and with his wealth he would give charity to the poor and needy and assist the people. Before, even before the Prophet sallallahu he never drank alcohol and neither did he commit any acts of shirk. And because of his fine nature, because of his good nature, he and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa were the best of companions, the best of friends, even before the Prophet ﷺ became a prophet and later on Abu Bakr Siddiq became the best of companions. So this is in brief um, the life of Abu Bakr Siddiq before the prophethood of Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. I would request all of you to make a note of all of the points that are said in the class and uh, revise them well. If you want to read the detailed life of Abu Bakr Siddiq, Besides listening to these uh, audio classes, I would request all of you to refer to the biography of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu by Dr. Ali Muhammad as-Sallabi, published by Darus Salam in the English language. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.